Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this video series uh, where we have a short interview with a PhD who is doing PhD in Aerospace Engineering in TU Delft, Netherlands. He is from India. So let's start with the interview with uh, Gaurav Mahapatra. I have with me Gaurav Mahapatra. Uh, so maybe you can give a short introduction. Where are you from? What's your name? What's your background? And then we can start the interview. Off to you. Hi, Sambit. Thanks for having me in your uh, channel. Uh, well, as you said, I'm Gaurav. Uh, I'm from Raukela, Odisha, India. Uh, and uh, yeah, I've been uh, studying in Netherlands since the past uh, six years now, approximately. Uh, I started as a master's student and I continued with a PhD. Uh, yeah, I would like to share more with you uh, about my experience. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, can you give a brief background of your uh, study or research or internships that you did in India before coming to Netherlands? So, yeah, I, uh, I'll start from my bachelor's. I did my bachelor's in aeronautical engineering uh, uh, at Manipal Institute of Technology, uh, Karnataka, not the Sikkim Manipal. Uh, and there I studied... Uh, uh, it was more like a, a mechanical oriented aeronautical engineering uh, approach. Uh, so initially I wanted to be an aeronautical engineer and uh, learn how planes work. Uh, that's what motivated me for that. Uh, later I realized that uh, I want to uh, do more towards aerospace and space engineering. So. Uh, uh, what really motivated me with. Uh, 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 to be here today is uh, I, I was part of the uh, student satellite team of Manipal, the first student satellite team. Uh, so during my bachelor's, I uh, for two and a half years, more or less, I worked uh, uh, in the first student satellite of Manipal. It was uh, it is still there and it's called Parikshit. And uh, we were trying to build a CubeSat, uh, which uh, is supposedly still going to be launched by ISRO. Uh, and uh, it was quite a fun experience and uh, uh, extremely motivating because we were building something from scratch with our own uh, knowledge and skills and hard work and uh, that completely reoriented my ambitions. So I would say that was a defining moment during my bachelor's uh, and I would also count that as my research experience. Um, but. Uh, at, during the last final year of my bachelor's, I did do my bachelor's thesis in a different topic, which is, uh, which was related to control systems engineering uh, for a drone. So I kind of uh, was exploring what I like. So I also did a, a bachelor's thesis, uh, which was different from my, uh, let's say, the primary work that I did during my bachelor's, apart from studies, of course. Uh, yeah, so I did quite a lot of work during my bachelor's and eventually I realized that uh, I like uh, space and uh, I have been passionate about space even before bachelor's. So I would like to work uh, or learn more about uh, different aspects of space engineering and uh, uh, specifically satellite engineering. So um, that's what I uh, did and I applied to TUDEL for uh, learning more about that. I don't know if I covered everything <laughs> what you asked. Yeah, I think it's 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 enough details like people yeah. will who are from the background can obviously relate to it. Yeah. Uh, so moving on to the present time when you are doing a PhD. So why did you choose to do a PhD in Netherlands after your master's? Like what were your uh, what was the thing that was going on in your mind that made you choose to do a PhD after master's here? So I think uh, yeah, so I would uh, start with probably what I did in my master's. Uh, so I initially when I came to do my master's at uh, TU Delft, I wanted to do specifically satellite uh, engineering and uh, the, the space department at TU Delft is very well known for that. And that was the primary reason why I came to Netherlands. So in a way, I came for my master's to Netherlands uh, and the PhD just followed afterwards. Uh, so 
the masters the motivation to do masters in netherlands uh, would be primarily because uh, so we knew about the restrictions in aerospace industry in us specifically uh there are quite a few restrictions for internationals to uh, uh do aerospace i think you need to have these regulations clarification and uh, even then you are still restricted to certain projects and you cannot do a lot of movement around uh so that's why i chose europe because also a few of my seniors were here and they told that uh, they give you more freedom to uh, pursue whatever you like um so that was the primary reason i came to do my masters uh and during my masters i kind of realized that uh i like the more uh, uh scientific aspects of the uh, satellite engineering or the whole uh space engineering more so in the space department or space engineering department we also have a big uh, satellite uh, data analysis and theoretical uh modeling uh, group um and after taking a few courses there i realized that okay this is something that i have always wanted to do that is something cl- close to pure physics and uh, this was the opportunity that i uh, wanted to take and uh, i did my masters thesis in uh, a very research oriented topic uh, so then i have completely deviated from engineering in a way um and the topic for my masters was uh, exploring the atmospheres of Uh, uh exoplanets so these are the planets which uh, uh, are uh, being found every other day in dozens around other stars by very powerful telescopes and uh, there there is a, a group in our uh, department who tries to understand what kind of atmospheres they are so uh, i worked uh, on this masters thesis and i must say that uh, uh, the the master's thesis kind of gradually led to the current phd so there you have it the motivation to do a phd in netherlands okay okay so in which year of your phd are you in and uh, when are you planning to end the phd i don't know if i should ask this question because normally you should never ask a phd like when they are going to finish it but still like it's true <laughs> Yeah so currently I'm in my uh, fourth year and uh, uh, yeah what was the other part so when are you planning to end the phd yeah so uh, well i have my funding for four years now and i'm intending to graduate within the coming uh, within the first half 20000 2021 uh, so yeah i have a uh, six to 8 months of uh, finalizing my phd and writing a thesis and uh, that's the kind of uh, timeline i'm looking at yeah okay uh, so how did you come to know about the phd position and how did you apply like for example in my case like uh, i was looking in academic transfer and apart from that i was also in talks with my supervisors with whom i did my master thesis so in your case what was the situation like you already knew some of your supervisors who had some funding or you applied by academic transfer or what happened with in your case yeah so in my case uh, i was an internal hire let's say uh, so i was doing my master's thesis in uh, in a topic which is very close to the phd uh, topic so uh, uh, one day while uh, uh, working on my masters i they always have this internal circulation of emails with uh, what are the possible masters uh, or phd uh, uh, opportunities that are coming up in the department uh so when i saw this and i was in my final 3 years of or 3 months of my uh, ph uh, uh, masters and uh, so i realized okay this sounds actually quite a nice opportunity for me because uh, it would basically mean that uh, i continue working on more broader aspects of my masters research uh so and it so happened that it is the same supervisor i was also uh, having for my masters so i contacted her through email and uh, of course but the uh, procedure is that uh, everyone has to apply uh, to the same channel uh, that uh, p- people from outside of tudel uh, applies so i use the i think the link and the procedure that they had given in the documents um and yeah it uh, it took a few months the whole process but uh, that's how it uh, happened 
Okay. Okay. So does that mean that you had a PhD interview or you did not have any interview? No, I absolutely had the same process that everyone else had to go through. So uh, okay. it involved it involved uh, an application, a resume, a cover letter, and uh, citing all your achievements and uh, a motivation letter also, which uh, is quite important, I would say, for anyone who's wanting to apply a PhD uh, for a PhD because a motivation letter actually shows that uh, 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 what what is your what is the main motivation that you are applying or wanting to do this research uh, so yeah and after this they gave, they asked me uh, to come for the first interview uh, where they asked, uh, they they informed me about uh, the position formally and who I will be working with and how the funding is, uh, gave the detail. I mean, by this time, I think there are multiple candidates who have applied internally and externally. Uh, so the first interview is more or less uh, for everyone to uh, get to know. So for, for us uh, as a ap applicant, to know what is the position and for the uh, employ for the employer um, to get to know what kind of candidate or person uh, and uh, this uh, you are and what your background is if you have relevant uh, uh, experience if your fit is good in the group uh, probably also there is some aspect of personality that they match but this is all very subjective yeah Okay, so this question, I have mentioned it many times, but still people have this perception that you are as a student when you do a PhD in most places in Europe, which is completely the opposite, like you, it's like a job, it, you are not a student, so you get paid a monthly salary. So yeah. maybe can you like give a brief uh, overview of the rough average salary that one can expect during a PhD on hand per month? Uh, after taxes and yeah. what is your rough costs to savings ratio like if a single person comes then he can have an idea like how much he can save like a range or something like yes what you said is right that is a phd uh, in netherlands is actually an employment and not a studentship most of the phds actually not not all i think i know some phds where people can be uh, uh, scholars, especially people who come through external funding. But in my case, as you said, I, I think as you also have, I have a uh, funding uh, as an employee. So we get treated as an employee. We have all kinds of employment benefits. And uh, so if anyone who wants to do a PhD at aer in aerospace at UDELP or in Netherlands in general, uh, this is the uh, this comes under the science uh, uh, PhD or research PhD. Uh, so uh, I think the Dutch government releases these uh, standardized slabs, uh, which applies to every researcher who's hired, uh, including PhD. Uh, so you can uh, I think they have provided enough transparent information in uh, on their websites to go and look at. Uh, in my case, uh, I think it's uh, the um, uh, the gross salary starts with around 2,000 euros, if I remember correctly, it's been four years now. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it was something around that and it increases every year. Yeah. And uh, I, I, so the in hand that comes uh, uh, is around 1,700 something. And uh, uh, so this amount is uh, uh, basically makes you above uh, the basic pay grade that uh, Netherlands has actually. So. Uh, everyone in Netherlands is uh, supposed to be earning a minimum base salary and uh, PhDs earn uh, a few steps above that. Um, and I would say as a single in Netherlands, especially in Delft, uh, uh, it is more than enough to have a, a good sustenance without having to worry about anything. So eventually, I think uh, I would save approximately 30% to 40%. Uh, uh, well, I, I have known people who have saved much more depending on uh, because the housing also takes a big chunk. So if you're living in a big shared house, then your monthly rent is very low and uh, uh, you can save more than 50 percent. But in my case, I was uh, have living in a two bedroom apartment. Uh, uh, I was sharing with another PhD and um, that meant that we had a, a little bit higher um, 
cost of uh, re renting a house. So I was saving around 30% of the okay. salary. Okay. Yeah, and also, uh, uh, also every year uh, you have an increment of the PhD salary, which you probably have addressed in your other videos. Uh, and it uh, so it is not static. It increases every year by a certain percentage. I think twenty or ten percent. I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, if I yeah. remember, I think in the second year the increase was really high, and then the third to fourth year all other increases are very less. Like yeah, uh, after you have the one year review, then the yeah. increase is really high, and then I think around final year you. Roughly, it's around 2,300, 400, 500, something like that in the range. And if you have 30% yeah. ruling, I don't know, like maybe a bit more like. Yeah, so uh, it uh, I have not remembered the exact specifics of the increment. We are too busy for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I do know that you, it caps around 3,000 or, or 2,800 to 3,000, if I remember correctly, by the end of four years. So The gross. Yeah. Yeah. Gross. Okay. Sad. But okay, also, we'll so, leave the links in the description below. Yeah, yeah, please continue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so what I was just saying that apart from the main salary, we also get a, a holiday bonus and a, a year end bonus. So these things are 8% uh, of your yearly salary. So which is actually quite a substantial amount. Yeah, roughly like one month salary, like roughly one month salary. So you can you, you can say that you effectively get 14 months of salary for 12 months of work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, let's go back to the PhD. Then uh, how is the PhD atmosphere according to you? Like opportunities to network, grow as a researcher, attend conferences, summer schools. So what's your overall experience till now? So uh, the, the whole, uh, the uh, how a PhD atmosphere is really is subjective. Uh, to every PhD, I would say. It depends on what group they are in and what uh, circumstance they are in uh, with their PhD. In my case, I I'm in a very nice group uh, where there are quite a lot of other PhDs. So the main, the main uh, network is my fellow PhDs in, in my department. And uh, I think there's ample opportunities to network because they actually encourage you to go and attend conferences and any event inside U Delft or outside U Delft. Uh, uh, in my case, uh, I would have at least two conferences a year and uh, I also did two or three uh, summer courses, uh, 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 so attended summer schools uh, during the whole span of my PhD until now. So I think that's uh, that also gives you quite a lot of opportunities to um, grow as a PhD. So um, yeah, we uh, one thing that I would like to say is that there's uh, the, the the aerospace department follows a structured approach of uh, uh, having uh, different competencies from a PhD. So I think it's, it's, it's the same for any Tudel PhD in a sense. Uh, we have a, a three core competencies: research. Uh, learning on the job, and uh, I think another is growth. I'm not sure. Uh, and we need to do certain activities to meet all of this, all of these three competencies. So, for example, a big part of PhD is writing, and most of us are never uh, taught how to write effectively. Uh, but at UDELF, they offer a lot of opportunities to uh, attend courses uh, and learn how to do that and how to present your research, how to uh, uh, yeah, how to do a presentation. There's a quite a lot of uh, uh, choices to grow in a PhD, but also they encourage you to go outside of your PhD bubble and talk with industry. So they also uh, 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 have events where the industry uh, um, participation is there and you can, you're free to talk to uh, people from the industry and get to know what their experience is. So I think there's enough uh, support from QDELF to allow you to grow as much as you want. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So let's move to the topic of your PhD. Maybe you can give a brief overview of what is your PhD about. <laughs> 